Hello, boys and girls. Here we are again. This is B-Pal, B-Pal Picks. And uh, we are bringing you fine picks every daily. Yesterday was a crushing day for us. We did very, very well. Again, we are, I actually made a mistake. I said we were 13 and five on ball picks yesterday. We're actually 13 and three on ball picks. Now we're 16 and four on ball picks for the last five days. Nailing it, nailing it, nailing it. All thanks to Mr. Borak here, the B part of. Uh, the or, 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 but the win percentage of 16 and four to round out the season, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we're up nine and a half units. We even, we hit our basketball pick yesterday, barely. He just freaking did her, but. Uh, right, barely. <laughs> just barely covered the spread. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, but we got her. Um, the only thing we didn't get was the Tampa Islanders game where we have, again, a team completely outplay a team and lose. Uh, it's just uh, I've been fading hockey, and that's my sport, and I've been fading hockey games. So uh, it's been a weird series. It's been a weird playoffs. Uh, maybe we should have expected that. I think when we were talking about before the – well, even started we said thing. expect the unexpected a funny thing with that game is if you were watching i'm not sure what time you uh called it or night uh watching that game or if you watched did you watch the whole thing yeah i did okay. i went live by the way i go live for those games you might yeah. want to come check it out sometime so they started playing lionel richie's on that long on that. <laughs> during the, during the second uh overtime and i'm like oh god this is probably gonna go until four something in the morning <laughs> Yeah. And of course, uh, which I predicted right, by the way. So I'm just going Google. I well, one guy with OT heroics, whatever it goes in overtime, says, everybody give me your goal predictions for each team. So I said Barkley Goodrow, who had a couple good chances in overtime, too, for the Bulks, and Jordan Eberle for the – Well, Island. that is quite the pick because Eberle well, doesn't shoot the puck. Yeah. So uh, Eberle, good job, Jordan. Uh, that's the one time I'll give the props to the Islanders. Good job, Jordan. I love you. <laughs> awesome okay let's get into some ball picks we got uh we're gonna do we do all the ball picks here um we have uh certain ball picks that are special to us and we give those out to our patreon people you can go check us out on uh at uh, patreon.com get the or get the uh, website uh, look up BPOW Picks, and uh, you can find us there. We have several subscribers. Thank you for subscribing, hitting the bell uh, for YouTube, and going over to Patreon and, and supporting us. It's been awesome. Like I said, you can tell by our record, people are making good money over there. And uh, you might want to do that, too. So, games today. Let's go. Uh, we're a little late for the Nationals Rays game, and it's a pretty straight play, so we're not going to go for that. go with that. Um, we're going to start off with the Athletics and Rockies, and we have a play for our Patreon here um, on the total. So we're just going to go on the line, Athletics and Rockies. Did you have a lean on there, Joe? Um, well, you mean like on the total runs for the game? No, on because we we already – did you have uh, – we had – I put in. Well, oh, you had it ML. Sorry, the yeah. opposite. Do you have a lean on the total? I, I forgot about that. We had oh. a lean. It was. Uh, I, it was that. It was that. Yeah, right. I mean, Fires is a guy that's been struggling uh, this year, but also last start, he pitched pretty good against uh, Texas. And um, obviously, the Rockies are better than the Rangers, but, they're, but they are a team that hasn't found their full stride yet they've been better recently fires gave up three and then five uh germ german marquez in his last couple of starts has given up two and two against both la teams before that and then struggled against san diego so or he struggled in san diego and then gave up two and two to both la teams i mean so i said that backwards at first so he's um been looking pretty good i would say especially with the oddities of this year and the fact that the a's just like winning with fires on the mound uh they're going to it's going to probably be an under because they i i, I think this is just going to be one of those 
Fires has looked when you watch him like he's kind of getting it back a little bit, but not fully. That's why he gave up like five, three runs, and then so in his last three starts. So it seems like it seems like he's figuring it out again. Where Marquez definitely, when you look at him, seems like he's starting to get his confidence back. Fires is more of a question mark if he's getting it fully back. But Marquez, I I believe he when you look at him and watch him and watch highlights and. MLB TV stuff, he looks like he's starting to get that fire back. So I would say there's a better chance at the under, which is probably the better play because I doubt they put that as the – I doubt they put the um, under as the favorite in this game with two guys that if you just look at it and don't look into it more, definitely would make you pick the over. Yeah, I was actually – before we got talking, you had uh, you had the law. I, I was looking at the under on that. Um, so there's a good lean for you. We both agree. Um, we went on the side for this game, and you can again you can check that out on our Patreon. But that's a pretty good lean. Um, so um, I didn't even realize because we didn't talk about it beforehand about the uh, total on this game. So as it turns out, we both are on the side of that. So. Uh, there's a good play for you. Okay, let's go to our next game. We also have we have a play on the total on this game, so we're going to go on the side for the Dodgers-Padres. This is a pretty difficult pick on the side, I would say. Yeah, uh, especially because Dustin May is a dominant youngster, and since he's come up, so is uh, Adrian Morihone. You get to see a top young lefty going up against a top young right-hander so definitely a game if you're not doing anything around 410 eastern you might want to uh or if you are doing something but can put something on in the background as we know a lot of good people do uh you can also do that so uh i believe this is a game yeah i'm not i mean this is a tough one that's almost a wash on the what i mean these teams you have when you have analysts when you watch stuff questioning who's better the Padres or Dodgers do do you actually think the Padres could be better than the when those questions are coming into place about a team that we thought would be one of the most better historic teams ever coming into the season in the Dodgers that doesn't mean the Dodgers aren't good they're still amazing they're 34 and 15 what it means is how good the Padres really are and how good Tingler is as a manager in his second season. Yeah, second season. Uh, so, like, it just shows the foundations they have in place. So the, that's going to be a great rival to watch forever, it seems, because these teams are building and building. You know, the Dodgers ain't going anywhere. And the Padres are building smartly now and spending money where they should and then saving it elsewhere. So, it's hard to pick this game. I would just say watch uh, watch the game. It'll be a fun game. Maybe live bet the game if you get a little bit of an inkling in your gut and uh, everything's going, okay, now I think I figured it out. But I wouldn't bet on it from the forefront. You might want to watch a couple innings and try to get a good feel for it, and then maybe that's a game you should live bet rather than from the forefront. Yeah, um, I and uh, I mean, I, I – the way I'm looking at it is if you really want to do a, a side on this, I've like we say all the time, it's almost like a 50-50 split, so you might as well go with the underdog. You know, over time, if you think it's a 50-50 game, the underdog will – it just makes sense financially that over time you'll be up more than you'll be down if you do that. So that's what I would say for that. Um, that's – if you're looking at – and the way we should be looking at betting is a long term, not trying to win for how much I made tomorrow, but how much did you make in a year. So those kind of plays, I'll put them in all the time just to because I know that over the long run, I don't care if I lose that one, but there's it's gonna you're going to win more than you lose probably over a long period of time. Interesting to keep the stats on plays like that. <laughs> okay, Uh Brewers, no, uh, we don't have a play for um, Brewers that's Cardinals. Uh, sorry? That's a doubleheader also. Yeah, this is the first game of the doubleheader. Yeah. This is with Suter, right? Uh, no, second Suter. The first one's supposed to be Wainwright and Woodruff. Oh, really? Where does my thing say here? Where did – how come that didn't – 
come up here. Right now in game two, the Cardinals haven't even picked a guy yet, uh, according to MLB.com. And the uh, what's them called? The Brewers have Brandon Sutter pitching, uh, who had a very funny blooper. I don't know if anybody saw that recently when he kind of wiped out and did a front flip as he was trying to throw a pitch on the mound and then got up and started laughing it off. If you didn't check that out on YouTube, make your day. Huh, that's weird. Um, they only have one up here. So you're, I'm going to have to rely on you in this one. The first game of the Orioles and our Brewers and Cardinals, what do you got? With how they've been playing behind them and how Ray, Wainwright, I, I must said Renwright because I was trying to say renaissance, how Wainwright is having a renaissance in his career uh, this year and is pitching the best he has in a while. That's great. We knew he would have great movement on his breaking balls. Breaking balls is one of the best in the game. But he's mixing in everything really well this year to have be back under a three ERA. Uh, I believe I would lean cards in that one. Uh, and I, Woodruff's been very solid, too. He's a very good pitcher, but it's just when you watch the Cardinals with their um, former ace, now one of the heart and soul leaders of the team at the age of 39, in Adam Wainwright that's still doing his thing and still being very productive for your team. They just seem to be really playing good in games he's pitched. And I don't think that's going to end today, so I would lean the Cardinals. Okay, we might as well go to the second game. I'm not going to talk about that because I haven't really looked about on it. I'm, I'm going with you on that one. But let's go look at let's look at the second game then. Where do what do you like in there? Right now, I would lean the Brewers until I know who in the hell is pitching for the Cardinals. Um, yeah, it doesn't I, still not showing who's pitching for that game, and this is all screwed up because mine didn't even show the first game. So, yeah. so I do like Suter because he's pitched out of the pen a lot more recently as a former starting pitcher, but he's also a guy that has pitched three innings at a time, so he could give you a couple good innings. The Brewers then would have to piggyback one of their other young arms that has experience starting or put in just go with their best relievers but right now because of my like for Sutter I would lean the Brewers but I would say uh stay tuned because I'll probably post something uh on the Patreon page that I can to kind of say okay this is how this is now because now we know who's pitching for the Cardinals. So. Let's hope that the cards put a dud in there, because you're getting pretty good juice. <laughs> that would be a good time. I guess if you want to take a chance on it, you could go with it now, but uh, we don't recommend that sort of activity here at PayPal Picks. But, uh, yeah, you can, uh, again, if you're a Patreon member, you get that fine information later on in the day and stuff like that over there. Okay, uh, so we are going to go Pirates and Reds now. Pretty tough game to say anything about, really, isn't it? I would lean the Reds uh, because they're playing better baseball. Like I kind of said yesterday, they they dug themselves into so deep of a grave. Now they're slowly looking better and getting out of it. Uh, hopefully for them and their fans, it's not too little too late because they're now only two games below 500. Uh, they, they're, they also are on a four-game winning streak. So the fact that Castile, who's also a very good uh, high-energy pitcher's pitching, and Brubaker, who hasn't been able to fully figure it out and is really kind of more of a four or five, if he can uh, figure it out, type pitcher, where Castile's a top two in your staff. Yeah. I would lean to the uh, Reds in this one. Yeah, maybe. I don't think – I don't know if you're getting all that much juice on that game anyways. No, not because the Pirates so. I can't imagine them giving the Pirates the favorite when they have. Rubio. Well, not getting a favorite, but I don't like. You might get. You might get not bad because the Reds sort of struggling. I, I, you know, I haven't looked it up. Uh, last I, last I saw, I think it was one point six four, or something like that. Which that in the American. Dog pick, what's that? On, that might be another definition of a dog pick, depending what the odds <laughs> are against Pittsburgh. Uh, on mine, it's. Uh, my, yeah, that's probably a definition of a door pick. They're minus 263, if you look at it that way. So, yeah. So, if you just want to throw – that might be better to throw into a parlay if you're trying to do parlay. Yeah, that's what I mean. You're not getting much juice. So, throw it uh, to juice up your parlay or something like that, it's uh, not a bad play. Um, total um, 
If the Pirates could actually hit a ball, it might not be all bad over there, but really um, it's so inconsistent with the Pirates, what they can do. Uh, so I would probably yeah, fade. Trust me, the guy I know that's a Pirates fan, uh, if you ever bet on Pittsburgh, he's like, he basically pulls a Nick Wright and it's like, the hell's wrong with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next game we got, uh, we have a play on for our Patreon people. So we have uh, on the total. So we're on the side for Red Sox and Marlins. Well, Boston won yesterday uh, like I thought they would with Hoke. I like him as a uh, pitcher. He also donated 700 bucks to a charity. Great guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. So with kick him which is a very interesting name and annoying to say it. But we'll kick him on the mat. Uh, he's been a journeyman his whole career, mainly in the minors. He's 31 years of age, has, doesn't have much major league experience. Uh, going up against a guy in Trevor Rogers, who's supposed to be a solid pitcher for the Mourns. He's a former first-rounder, 13th overall pick. Uh, he just hasn't fully uh, honed it in by any stretch of the imagination. Yet he really struggled against the Phillies and pitched a decent game against Tampa after pitching a pretty good game against the Mets. So... Uh, I would definitely lean towards the fish in that one because Boston very rarely won went back to back games this year. And two, with a journeyman thirty one year old that's been a career minor leaguer, I don't think that's gonna give you the energy momentum boost. I said Boston usually needs to win games. That would be more Rogers if he comes in and pitches like he did against the Rays and against the Mets would be giving the Marlins that boost, not the other way around. So that's All right. what to the fish there yeah i would not a bad play actually uh i, I think you're, i don't think you're getting bad juice on that game actually either so uh it's not my favorite but i would definitely consider it throw a tiny bit on it what the heck um okay so our next game i got all turned around here because we did Ranger, are we doing Rangers Astros now? No, sorry, we're not. We're doing Mets Phillies again. Mets Phillies again. The series is going on forever. Um, Mets and Phillies. You probably have a good chance. The only risk you would have putting in a well under is one, depending how low the under is coming in at. But you do got Jacob Degrom going against his former good buddy. Uh, coming off of that fingernail issue in uh, Zach Wheeler. Um, so probably have a pretty good chances in under when you have a 4-1 guy with a 1-6-7 and a 4-0 guy with a 2-5-2-4-7 ERA, excuse me. Um, so I would say an under in terms of who's going to win that game with those two guys on the mound, that's almost a wash. So I don't know if I would that, – that, that with that I would say, like Pierre said before, you're probably better off going with who's not favored because uh, – at least you can make money on that because those two guys going up against the Groms pitching for another Cy Young again. Uh, I don't know how many guys have won it three years in a row or if that's happened. Or, so that will be interesting. Um, and then uh, Wheeler uh, continues to do his thing. And when he was in New York in 18, when DeGrom won his Cy Young, also in parts last year, he matched him. So it was kind of a competition, an inner competition those guys had for a couple months. He never matched him the whole season. But when he got hot, he matched him in a couple months of the season. So I would think that that that's going to keep flowing now on the opposition even more so. So I would say you have a good chance at the under, for sure. Uh, I was all over the place on that. Um, those are two. I mean, the Phillies can come out and just, you know, we've seen them hit like crazy. Uh, the Mets have some bats. It's yeah, although with our injuries, if we, that, that would kind of be a Phillies thing to do. But if the Phillies, who are my team, just hit Jacob DeGrom over the ball, that's when be, I don't understand this team. This team makes absolutely no sense. Reese yeah. Hoskins and JT Real Muto are injured, and you're telling me we put a 10 spot on the best pitcher in baseball? Look, <laughs> my So uh, that that's that's the reason um, why I feel there's a good chance of that being an under, even at, which I just realized is at like seven and a half or eight, depending what you're looking at. But st with those two pitchers that normally go into the sixth inning or more, 
uh, I would say that you still have a pretty good chance at an under. Granted, this is 2020, so like you said, knowing the way the Phillies operate, to somehow drop a five spot in the first inning off of the best pitcher in baseball. But yeah. I don't see that happening. So. <laughs> yeah, tough game. Uh, it would make sense that it would be under for sure. I've just been burnt by the Phillies so many times. It's it's unbelievable. When their bats are going, they're going. It doesn't seem to matter who they're going. Right, they were really going yesterday. They, they were able to muster four runs. And then win. Like, their, their bats weren't really going against Porcello. The reason they actually won is because a guy pulled his oblique. That shouldn't have been starting anyway. And then had to be subbed out. And then Adam Hazley got a pinch hit. And, then, and that started our scoring. And then, that, which was technically the winning hit because that scored two people. So they would have won if they won two to one. And then uh, Diddy had a, jumped on it, which had to be a guest pitch because you don't usually jump and kill a first pitch changeup jumped on a first pitch changeup and demolished it and hit the sign in right field. Right. Electric uh, scoreboard. So the, the, that that's why I feel if they didn't get it fully ticking against Ricky, I don't think they're going to get it fully ticking against Jacob DeGrom. Because Purcell was a former Cy Young winner, but he's not that anymore. And we still make him usually look like a former Cy Young winner. So. Uh, a current Cy Young uh, com- competitor, I mean, which right. is not- yeah. Okay, uh, Blue Jays Yankees. We have a play on the uh, side on this, so we'll keep that for our Patreon members. What about the total? Any total on that? Um, it's at eight and a half. I mean, the only way I see that going over is if. The Jays make it go over because Cole is locking in better and he's pitching for the Yankees. And it seems like the as the season progresses, he's starting to get more confident in New York, uh, which it, which usually for certain pitchers, that's always been the story of the Yankees. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to go back to your old self pitching for what would kind of be considered America's team in baseball. The Cowboys are considered America's team in football, unfortunately. Uh, where the Yankees, unfortunately, also <laughs> are considered America's team in, in baseball. So uh, you sometimes it takes a little bit to get your mojo going, playing for the hot, mo- highest pressure team in the sport. Uh, and now he's got it back. It's not like he pitched bad. He just didn't pitch like Garrett Cole. He pitched like a very good top three pitcher. Now he's pitching like Garrett Cole again. So yeah. you, you could – the only one I would risk there if you have extra money is just going for the under and hoping Roark can hold the Yankees. And then that that's the other, because you're not going to, I don't think there's a point of putting in for the over. So if you have extra money and you want to throw it at something, you can try the under and hope that the Yankees get held off and Roark pitches one of those three, four run uh, games that he goes into the sixth or six and two thirds, one of those types of things. Yeah, I'm pretty much on your play on that as well. Um, Royals tires. Do we have something on that? We do, don't we? No, we didn't. We didn't put anything for the Royals and Tigers. Uh, Tigers just spanked the Royals yesterday. Uh, what, uh, do you see anything like that happening today? Or do you think, uh, the, no. uh, yeah, Royals will come back on this one? I don't see Kansas city, uh, getting killed again. Cause singer who's, um, been a pretty good, he's, uh, getting more and more confident. He destroyed the Indians. Uh, and scooble has been a lot better uh, recently. He's a guy that when you're a, obviously, as we know, in a shorter season and when you don't start the season and you're a young guy that comes in eventually, if you have one or two bad games, you're already screwed. So uh, he's looked a lot better recently. Uh, he definitely is not pitching like a uh, seven over seven ERA pitcher. That's because his ERA got screwed by a couple outings. Yeah. And he has to bring it back down because this is a 60 game season. You don't have the overabundancy amount of time there, but, uh, and he's only pitched in five games. So he's in the process of, uh, bringing that back down. 
He only gave up one against Minnesota after giving up only two against Minnesota. He did struggle against St. Louis. So uh, he's now, I believe this is a game that's going to be, again, two young pitchers that are going to be fun to watch for years to come. If I had to lean anybody, I'd be leaning Kansas City to bounce back. Brady, uh, I wouldn't be shocked if because he just seems like a guy – one, he has the bounce back spunk, just like Scooble has, who started off a little slow and then immediately started having a couple good starts. Or when he has a bad start, he's like, okay, I got this. I have, I'm not phased by that bad start. Just get him next time, and whoever the next opponent is. And that was eight scoreless innings against the Indians. So the Indians are definitely better than the Tigers. So <laughs> I, I would say that um, – He's going to pitch good again. Scuba will also pitch good, in my opinion, but because of the energy when Singer's pitching good, like I was saying to you beforehand, when he's going like he did against the Indians, it's almost like you're watching like a Hall of Famer. Right? Like it's a guy that you know, like Garrett Cole. Like you just know in the first couple innings with Brady Singer, the way he pitches, the way he can hire his speed on some pitches, kind of take off a little bit on others and locate and have a good breaking ball. He, he's one of those pitchers, if he's on, you know, in the first two innings, that team's screwed. And I have a feeling that's going to be how he is coming off of that, his best start of his career against the Indians. That's why I would lean towards the uh, Royals. Right. Okay. Now, and, uh, I, I agree with you. I think the Royals. Yeah. Both offenses could be screwed until these two come out of the game. But I would lean towards the Royals to – get a hit off of a bullpen still because you still have a couple, you have a Whit Murray field and you have a lot of guys that have been putting together some pretty good uh, years for you in a season that isn't promising of all, but also is still, I think a better win total than you thought if you end up getting to 23, 24 wins when it's all said and done. So they got a couple guys, Salvador Perez is killing it this year. Mikel Franco, former Philly, they got guys that I believe over the about only four total people on the Tigers can potentially put you over if you and get the win if those two starters do really good in latter innings. Um, that's kind of how the Orioles or the Royals, excuse me, have won some games just by being clutch late in games, and then that's why they win because all they have to do is pitch good for one inning at that point or two innings. So. Excellent. Um... Yeah, I agree with you. I had Royals too. So, um, good little lean for you. I don't know if you're, you're, yeah, you're not getting bad juice. So, I'll maybe throw a little bit on that one. Uh, okay, we got to get, get her moving here. We're going to go all for Houston uh, uh, versus Texas. Um, this might. No, I still think Houston will probably win this. Hey, how about you? Yeah, yeah, I think the Astros are going to win that game. Uh, McCullers is a uh, guy that, coming off of some injuries and stuff, still figuring it out, but Gibson just hasn't had a good year as a whole, just like the rest of the Rangers team pretty much, um, as a whole hasn't had the year they've hoped. And the Astros are battling for a spot, still obviously trying to get better in those standings, only sitting at 500, I would definitely say Astros. Yes, absolutely. Indians, Cubs. That that game, I would lean Indians because Savoy Lester started the season good, then has gone a little bit off keel uh, since. Other than in his most recent start against Milwaukee, he pitched six shutout. But prior to that, he gave up five in both of his starts, and one of those was against Pittsburgh. So I would lean towards uh, Savalle, who's been more consistent. His team hasn't been with him uh, because he's three and five. But uh, I think uh, they'll figure out a way there because they have guys that will probably jump on John Lester, just like other teams have done recently, including the downtrodden Pirates. So, Yeah, no, I didn't like that pitching matchup either. I like the Indians all day. And finally, uh, a play that, Again, we we faded it yesterday. I, I don't really think it's much different today. Uh, Diamondbacks versus the Angels, two teams that are extremely inconsistent, and I don't even think they know who are, who's going to win right now, especially with these two. 
in <laughs> it's uh, Taran and Boomgarner, right? Um, no, no, no. Bumgarner pitched yesterday. Tonight it's Bundy and uh, oh, right, Bundy, right, right, yeah, right. Okay. Smith, who uh, came over from the uh, Marlins, who hasn't pitched that much yet this year, but uh, for them, um, he he done okay in the couple games he's pitched. They these teams don't have good bullpens though. So putting in an under for an Angels and D-backs game is risky. You would have to be going off of the fact that Bundy's been amazing and Caleb Smith is usually a really good pitcher. That seems like the change of scenery so far in only two games. Seems like it has helped him out. So if we're going to do anything. I would do the under. Otherwise, I would stay away from the game. Yeah, I was fading. Well, that's our full forty-two percent boys and girls. Did we do Giants and Mariners? Oh, Giants and Mariners, right. Now, this, I don't know, whoever was doing this, he's usually solid. He's, there is a lot of missed games here. And uh, actually, a lot of games are showing the uh, yesterday's pitchers. Uh, Giants and Mariners, wasn't that, didn't they, uh, weren't they closing that off? They moved it back to San Francisco. Okay, the so they are going to play it now? Yeah, they're going to play with the Mariners as the home team in San Francisco. Okay. Well, with yeah. that in mind, sure. What do you what, what do you see on that? What do you do? What's the pitching matchup on that? I don't even have uh, it. Here. It's Lejay uh, Newsome again. Another cool name. A lot of cool names in baseball this year. Um, against uh, um, where's he at? Drew Smiley, who's been going back and forth between starting and so that game. That game's going to be hard. That game's almost because you have two teams that are battling for a spot. Uh, you have San Francisco, who's trying to bounce back from that four-game losing streak against the Seattle club, who uh, is 6-4 and four in the last 10, but lost their last game coming into the San Fran series. I would lean because of how Smiley's been doing wherever they placed him to the Giants because I don't think they're going to lose four straight, especially when they know they're still in that final playoff spot right now. So I think that's going to make them up the ante and go, okay, we got to snap this back in now. Otherwise, we're not going to be in this final playoff spot. So I think that's why I would lean them. But that's a game that unless if you have extra money, I wouldn't really bother with too much. Yeah, Giants have been so consistent. Mariners are doing the best they can, but they just don't have the the uh, weapons to be able to win games. So very difficult one to pick there. Um, I actually was kind of leaning the Mariners there simply just because of the juice you're probably going to get, and that's about it. I But for the most part, that's a fade. So now we're back to... That's our full 42%. Yeah. <laughs> so have, uh, that's all our ball picks for today. Um, we have, like I said, we're hitting huge over at Patreon. Got an awesome record. People are making tons. Also, don't forget steelflyers.com. That is going to be an amazing website. It's already a website. Now you can go check it out. But uh, we have a lot of announcements coming up for that website. A um, lot of cool stuff. I just got my... A uh, little password and everything for my page, and we're going to work on that. It's going to be uh, – there's going to be different writers, different podcasters that have their own pages. We write on every single team, and uh, there's possible – possibly, it sounds like the intent is that we're going to have a live feed going through the whole thing. So you'll be able to watch – listen to like a radio-style programming and be able to look at different writers writing about your team, great writers for that matter, like Joe Bork, who has his own stuff there. You can find all his stuff at steelflyers.com. You can find mine as well. Uh, thank you very much for joining this programming. Uh, we have we love to have you, all your subscribing and everything. And uh, we will see you tomorrow with some more ball picks and probably football picks too, hockey as well. Have a great day. Lots of love to you. Thank you.